Hey everyone, it's Mr. B here. I hope you're doing really well. Today we're going to go over the um, vocabulary honeycomb, which is a great way to explore language in more depth. So, see you in a bit. So, guys, you can see we've got our honeycomb in front of us with the word ascend in the middle. Now, before we go to a dictionary to find out the meaning of the word, we're going to first look at it in different sentences. And we're going to think about what does that word mean? And if we don't know what the word means, we're going to read around that sentence to get some meaning. Once we've done that, and perhaps we've talked to our partners, we've talked to people we're working with, we're then going to go to a dictionary. But what's really important is that, is that we're not just copying the definition from the dictionary, we're coming up with our own understanding. So my understanding of the word ascend, once I'd read the dictionary definition, was to move up or climb something. Yeah. And I thought about different contexts in my life where I could use the word ascend. And that helped us really nicely with this segment here because when we have to fill in our example, we're thinking of a real life example that we can relate to. So I've put to move up some stairs would be to ascend up them. Okay? So. If I go up some stairs, I'm ascending. I could also say I am ascending up them. Our synonyms and our antonyms, if you're in year two upwards, these are two grammatical phrases that you should know. Synonyms are words which are similar, while antonyms are words which are um, opposite in meaning. Why do we look at synonyms and antonyms? Well, we look at synonyms and antonyms because it helps us to deepen our understanding because we're thinking about, okay, ascend means this. What other words are very similar? If I was to um, explain it differently, could I use a different word? Whereas an antonym, words which mean the opposite, are great too because they help us think about what is it not? And that's really important think when we think about language what is it what is it not so for my synonyms I went to a thesaurus and I found the word ascend and I came up with climb escalate lift off and take off and you might notice that they are slightly different in meaning climb you can climb up something but you could also climb across something and you can say the same about soaring escalate you can escalate something, but I would say escalate is most commonly used when we're talking about a social situation. To escalate a situation would be to make it worse. People might say, I'm up to here today. So they might be pointing, pointing to the top of their head, saying, I'm up to here today. What they mean is, I can't take any more. So de-escalate the situation, bring it down, calm it down. Lift off and take off, often used um, in, in association with Planes and, and rockets. Saw, we probably think of birds. Lift off and take off, I think we would describe a rocket, not a bird. And that's interesting why saw fits with a bird, but perhaps not a rocket. And this is the point, they all have slightly different meanings. If I was to say to you, a rocket lifts off and a rocket ascends, actually they both work, but which one do you prefer? Which one in your mind do you get the clearest possible picture? And now we've got our characteristics on our non-example. So our characteristics, they are things that you experience with this word. So we've got to move up higher and higher. You are moving up higher and higher if you ascend. We've got um, my ears might be popping. So if you've ever been in a plane, you probably have experienced this. Your ears will pop because of the pressure and the wind might be blowing in your hair yeah because if you're up high the wind does blow in your hair so um, these are things that are experiences okay so now we're looking at a non-example a definition close but not the same where can we find our non-examples well of course we can look at our synonyms again because our synonyms actually when we generate synonyms we are generating lots of different non-examples why is a non-example important well a non-example is important because it helps us to be precise if we are talking about ascending we're talking about moving up whereas if we read this fly you can fly through the air you can fly up 
but fly can also mean to move quickly. You might hear in football or rugby wingers flying down the wing because they're really fast. And so because of that, fly doesn't quite fit ascend. They're not quite the same. And that's really useful because if I'm explaining something, whether that's in my writing, reading, or just equally as important, speaking and talking about it, I want to be precise. I want people to fully understand what I'm saying. And so fly is very closely related, but it doesn't quite fit. So we've gone through, and I've gone at quite a pace, but I've gone through our honeycomb just as a little refresher. You will find on our website this document to download. You'll also find, if you're in key stage one and reception, your own type of honeycomb which you've been using and again have a go use them at home choose a word that you are fairly confident on but then explore in more depth and as you get more confident you'll be able to choose words that you're less and less familiar with so good luck um, do send them in you can almost always email them to your teachers um, or you can send them in and you know, we, we love uh, celebrating what you're doing at home and putting them on the Facebook page. Uh, and we'd love to see all the unusual words that you end up exploring. Great. See you soon.